Next, we're going to look at something called a hypoeutectic composition. And by hypoeutectic, we mean below the eutectic composition. So anything below a tin content of 61.9%. So let's, for argument's sake, say we have a composition of 40% tin. And here we're at around 270 degrees C. Now what's going to happen is as we begin to cool that material, we're going to enter the first region, which is alpha plus liquid. Well, alpha plus liquid is solid lead-rich alpha plus liquid. So what's this telling us? Well, what it's telling us is that as we reduce the temperature, alpha is going to start solidifying out. But we're still going to have our liquid phase. So what we will begin to see is alpha solidifying out. So we'll have solid patches like so, and each of these solid patches will be alpha. Recall that alpha is our lead-rich solid. As we continue to cool, we get more and more alpha forming. And because solid alpha is forming, the composition of this liquid here is changing. If we have alpha plus beta, and we're decreasing the amount of alpha in the liquid, then the composition of beta must be increasing. So if we started with a liquid that was 40% tin, but now we're removing lead from this liquid, then if we're removing lead minus PB, then the concentration or the percentage tin must be increasing. So the percentage of tin is going to increase in the liquid above 40%. Well, this is going to continue because if we keep cooling this, then our areas of solid alpha are going to increase. So if we drop the temperature a little further to say 185 degrees, then we're going to end up with greater amounts of solid alpha, meaning the composition of tin within the liquid is going to continue to increase. Now that is actually going to continue happening until we get back to our eutectic composition. So in effect, what's happening is the liquid is kicking out alpha. So we're going from 40% tin to 50% tin as we kick out more alpha, to 60% tin, kicking out more alpha, to 61.9% tin once we've kicked out sufficient alpha to reach the eutectic composition. Now here's the important thing. If you recall from the previous example, when the eutectic begins to form, we form in layers. So within the rest of the region, we're going to get layers of alpha and beta. like so. So our original composition hasn't changed. The overall composition of this material is still 40% tin, but in the layered section, the composition is 61.9% tin, and in these grains here, the composition is lead-rich alpha. Let's look at one more example, which will help to enhance your understanding of what we just spoke about there. And this time we're going to look at hypereutectic compositions. Okay, so in a hypereutectic composition, we must have more than 61.9% tin to begin with. If we have 61.9%, we have a eutectic composition. And if we have less than 61.9% tin, we have hypoeutectic compositions. So let's say this time we start with a composition that's 80% tin. And our starting temperature in degrees C there is somewhere around 230 degrees, looking along to our left-hand axis. So we can see that if we're at 230 degrees at a composition of 80%, then we have a liquid. So we have a fully molten alloy. But if we begin to cool that, and let's cool it first of all to 190 degrees, when we call it to 190 degrees, we can see that we're in the beta plus liquid range. So similar to before, we're going to have sections where solid begins to form. Now the big difference this time is that that solid is beta. And the surrounding area is liquid because we have beta plus liquid at that temperature. 
If we were to continue to cool but not quite reach the eutectic temperature of 183 degrees C, then each of those beta regions would increase in size. As they increase in size, we would be kicking beta out of the composition. So we started with a composition of 80% tin in that liquid, but some of that tin is solidifying out, meaning the composition of tin within the liquid must be decreasing. So we would get to a composition of 70%, we would get to a composition of 65%, until we reached a composition of 61.9% tin. Okay, so until we reach a composition of 61.9% tin, each of these regions is going to continue to increase in size. Once we hit 61.9%, that's our eutectic composition. And that's the point that both our alpha and our beta go directly from liquid to solid phase, as we spoke about here. So once again, we'd get our layering. Our layering would consist of layers of alpha plus beta in alternate layers. Our laminar structure here. Okay, so let's just summarise what we've learned so far. So we've seen a number of different things here. On the left hand side we've seen what happens when a eutectic composition cools in order to form a solid and we get these laminar structures forming. We then looked at hypo-eutectic where hypo means below the eutectic composition and what we saw there we saw alpha solidifying out before the eutectic composition was restored, and then the laminar structure forming. And finally, we saw hyper-eutectic. And in the hyper-eutectic, where the composition of tin was higher than the eutectic composition, beta solidified out before the laminar structure formed. Now, the important thing here is, the alloy that we were referring to there was an alloy of tin and lead. And what we notice, if we analyse the shear strength in relation to composition for that particular alloy, is that the shear strength is actually maximum at the eutectic composition. So we see something like this, where the peak represents our eutectic composition. If we have hypo-eutectic or hyper-eutectic compositions, then the strength is actually reduced. What this means in the context of this example is if we're manufacturing solder, then ideally for maximum strength, we want that solder to be at a composition of 61.9% tin and 38.1% lead. The other advantage of that composition, as we saw, is that it will have the lowest melting temperature. It will go directly from solid to liquid at the lowest temperature of 183 degrees C.